Good morning, good afternoon, good evening for another special edition of Wowza Live. Uh, this edition is brought to you from Mexico City with our host, Antonio Aguelas. Antonio? Steve, muy buenos días. Buenos días, buenas tardes, buenas noches en cualquier lugar del mundo donde nos escuchen. Y como todos los viernes, a esta hora de la mañana, desde la Ciudad de México, Wowza Live! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And, um, Stephen, this morning we have um, four very good friends of, uh, of, uh, of mine and Nora and of the swimming community in Mexico. Um, great race directors of the most, um, I would say, the most emblematic swims that we have in Mexico. And um, we have uh, Edna Llorens uh, from, uh, uh, she's living in La Paz, in uh, Baja, Baja, south of uh, Baja California Sur. Um, and she has been doing, and she will tell us a little bit more about a race called Por Ellas. Um, it's a race that in English would be for them. And uh, it started with five swimmers um, who had survived um, cancer. And now it's one of the most uh, um, uh, demanded events in, uh, in Mexico. Then uh, we have Belin Villasante. Belin uh, is, uh, you, will which, you, will, you will love hearing her, Stephen, because she, she has a race in, um, in, in, uh, in Nayarit, and, um, and she is very tough on security. She has a book and a, a complete uh, um, course on uh, security in swimming. So I know you are a fan of that, and uh, you know, it'll be great for, to hear from her. Then we have Rene and, uh, and um, his partner, uh, Mr. De La Madrid, there, you know, as you see there, the young ones, they're enjoying sitting in Chapala, which is uh, uh, this, uh, this, this city close to, to Guadalajara. And they will give, tell us about uh, um, uh, their, their new event. This was the event that we were going to um, uh, have the, the WOS Awards. And now we'll have okay. to see what's going to happen. And uh, they will telling us, they will tell us how how they are preparing it's going to be interesting because we will be swimming in a in a in a uh, um 750 meter um uh lane and um so that's that's an interesting race and then in some moment we'll have uh, rafa hernandez from uh, el cruce cancun be with us so um i will give the, the the microphone to each one of you in in the way in the, in the order that i presented you so if you can tell us two or three minutes where your event is taking place and, and uh, how, you know, our, our audience is worldwide, uh, believe me. So, you know, the first question everybody's gonna ask is, how do I get to La Paz, Baja California? And the same to the other events. So why don't you tell us a little bit more about your event, Etna? Uh, I can tell you that it's not easy to come into La Paz. Uh, it's easier from the States, uh, Pacific as you take a straight flight to Cabo, or you fly to Tijuana and you can take a straight flight to La Paz. So this year we are uh, thinking to make it a um, two days swimming event. It used to be just one day, but I am uh, adding 10K. So we'll divide on Saturday, three, five and 10K. And then Sunday will be the 35K in relay and solo swim. Thank this you. October. <laughs> uh, so, so it will it will happen this October. Yes, we're working for that, and okay. we're looking for everything. So we just uh, depend on how the, the authorities will take this out and Great. start. Yes. Okay. Good to hear. Yes. And you'll have a great speaker for all the swimmers that come. Do I? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, we have an <laughs> I am so pleased that Antonio, Antonio Arguelles is coming to, to have a chat. I don't know if he's going to give a conference. Still don't know the name of his chat or, or, or conference. But now we're telling everybody here and as well about your book. And 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 the the the, the thing that you're gonna do selling this book now it's a big thing here and also we would love you to to come 
down here and uh, or up here from Mexico City and give some classes. Like everybody's like, oh, Tony Arguelles, and now everybody's <laughs> looking for your book. And that's amazing. And, and this is going to be a very good thing. Thank you very much for accepting that invitation. It will be a pleasure to have you here. Thank you for the commercial. How many people, <laughs> how many people usually go to your event, Edna? Uh, this event has been growing like I can hardly um, accept how, how, how fast it's growing. And um, the last year we have uh, 530 swimmers in just one day. Now we're hoping that we can repeat uh, like 500 and something swimmers. I don't know if people is coming because of all this pandemic thing or I don't know, but I'm going with all my heart again to do so. And we're, this is the first time that we are going to give all these media information so people get to know and we can have audience. <laughs> so it's growing. Last year, we, well, I can tell you that in 2018, we have like 460. And then last year, 530, 38 swimmers. That was like incredible. So it's growing so fast that I can hardly handle it. <laughs> hardly handle it. <laughs> so this, this year I'm, I'm thinking in two days because it's really, really exhausting. And how is the water? How is the beautiful ocean down there? Oh, it's, it's amazing. You know, the Sea of Cortez. And there's sometimes that the teams are just taking off and the dolphins are there, right? Wow. And they can see whale shark, they see dolphins, they see a lot of uh, um, uh, fauna here. The water is between 26 and 27 degrees. So it's a very nice water for myself. But suddenly we have swimmers from New York or or some other places and they say the water is so hot <laughs> and i just say well enjoy the jacuzzi right <laughs> and the ocean so it's really nice thank very you very safe. much thank you very much etna lean tell us about your your your, your event uh, hello well uh, we are in a very good location because probably not many people know about riviera nayari but knows about Puerto Vallarta. So we are, we share the same bay, that is the Bay of Bahia de Banderas. We are in the same bay. So the only thing that we uh, uh, get difference is you have to cross a bridge, so you are in the other side. So our event takes place in Riviera Nayarit, in a little town, in a marine park, Post that is in uh, Riviera Nayarit. It's a very uh, nice place. Uh, Edna has been here before. And well, we, we start in the 2011, the first um, edition of the event. And we start from 300 people. And right now our capacity is 800 and we don't have more capacity. So we always uh, close the subscription in the, when we get to 800 people, because we we are very careful, like you said, Antonio, in the in water safety. So that's why we we don't have enough capacity, and also because it's not a cross, it's a circuit. Our event is a circuit, so it depends on the category how many laps the people have to do. And, and what are the distances? What, what? Well, the, the, big, uh, the big lap is 1.75K. And we also have 500 meters because also we receive children for seven years old, 290 and up. So it depends on the category, the many laps that the people can do. Okay, Belin, and um, what is, when you're talking about safety, um, and you and I talked the other day about the importance of safety in the water, um, mm -hmm. what do you look in your event? What, 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 when people 
they're listening to us and say, look, I mean, that's an event that has safety standards. What would be, what would you say are the key issues uh, in terms of safety for an event this large? Because 800 people, it's a lot of people in the water. I mean, it's a, yeah, I yeah, it's a lot of people. We have to do a lot of uh, organization. And well, yeah, we take a, uh, we take a, a lot care about that, the safety. Uh, and that's why uh for beginners the, the the people that is like a new beginners for swimmers it's it's like a very um the event gives you the opportunity to start like doing or trying open water that's why for us it's very important and it's very very important to have all the security we have a team that all the guards the uh, say, la, ¿cómo se llama? Uh, 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 lifeguards. Uh, the lifeguards are certificate. We have before the event, we have meetings to how what we are going to how we are going to work in the event, and almost all the the, the team of lifeguards are uh, friends of us uh, and they start with us in the, from the beginning. So right now they have a lot of experience with, with us in the event. And we take care about the, with the Marine, with the, the, all the, uh, the um, boats and kayaks that we have. And that's why many people wanted to go to our event because they feel safety and they wanted to start in an open water event. So it's a very good start. What are the dates? When, when does it usually take place? Well, we always do the event on, in, on April because I think it's the, for us, it's a very good season here in Riviera Nayarit because it's before the starting rain, the rain season and also the temperature of the water is 25, 26 degrees. So it's a very uh, nice water. And also because it's the end of the season. Here in Puerto Vallarta, well, you ask uh, how to get here. So it's very easy to get here because many people from Canada and from the United States come here to Puerto Vallarta and Riviera Nayarit to stay for seasons, long seasons, like four, five, six months every year. So we have direct flights from Canada, from United States, also not, and now from uh, Europe, for example, England, direct flights to Manchester, to Puerto Vallarta, Phoenix to Puerto Vallarta, um, Montreal to Puerto Vallarta. So it's very easy that people, uh, foreign people from the United States, Canada, and some parts of Europe are coming to the event because it, we are a touristic place. A very famous movie with Richard Burton was filmed there, uh -huh. The Night of the uh, Water. And also, you know, the uh, <laughs> uh, Terminator. Terminator, see. Also, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, now we'll go from, uh, from uh, the two beaches into the, the middle of Mexico in uh, the state of Jalisco. Uh, uh, Rene and Carlos can tell us about uh, um, their event in Chapala. Well, good morning, everybody. Well, first of all, I want to thank you, uh, Antonio, Steven, and Nora, for the invitation to talk to you a little bit about our event at this at the greatest uh, open water swimming forum in the world. Also, among uh, some of the uh, of the best. Uh, open water swimming event uh, organizers in Mexico. Uh, I mean, uh, Edna, Belin, and Rafael. Uh, let me tell you that I have uh, participated for for at least the last uh, three, four years in your events, and they have always been flawless. I have always uh, enjoyed them a lot. So uh, thank you very much for the invitation. So uh, as for our event, it's a brand new event. Uh, let me just uh, firstly tell you a little bit about us. Uh, we're a group of uh, sport and swim lovers. Uh, let me introduce you to Carlos La Madrid. Carlos La Madrid is uh, an elite professional water skier. He has been uh, participating in uh, 
uh, World uh, Water Ski Championships and podium that uh, uh, Pan American uh, Water Ski Championships. So we we are both very fond of uh, of of sports overall. Uh, we are an integrated integrated team with uh, also Carmen Surrosa, uh, who she is an outstanding triathlete and knows a lot about uh, event organizations and all the rest of it. So uh, as for our event, uh, the venue is in Chapala, Jalisco. To get here is actually very easy. You fly to Guadalajara uh, International Airport. There are flights from all over into Guadalajara. And uh, Chapala is only uh, 15 to 20 minutes away from Guadalajara Airport. So it's very, very easy to get into. And uh, the event will take place in a man-made lake. It's a private uh, lake, which is, as Tonyo was saying, it's uh, uh, over 750 meters long and about uh, 100 meters wide. So uh, it'll be a two-day event uh, where on Friday we will have the registration. On Saturday, we will have the open water swimming event uh, where people will be able to choose between uh, 1.5 kilometers, 3 kilometers, or 7.5 kilometers. After that, with the blessing uh, of Steven and Antonio, our plan is to organize uh, the greatest Mexican traditional cocktail to be the host yes. of the... Of the WOSA uh, Swimming Awards with a what lot, a lot of Herradura Blanco for Antonio. Ah, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and uh, there, uh, we, uh, uh, all the participants will have the, the opportunity uh, to meet a lot of uh, Mexican swimming legends uh, who are, are jumping into the project, uh, such as uh, Nora, Toño, Mariel, Arlene, Jaime Lomelin, Patty Coleman. Uh, we have been doing a lot of uh, lobbying with, with swimmers and, and uh, throughout the whole event, we will be presenting uh, big short clips and videos from their profiles and so, some of their crossings so that uh, it raises interest for, for local swimmers and participants for them to, uh, to be able to, to look a little bit further and want uh, and raise some uh, interest into longer challenges or, or biggest, bigger challenges, right? So uh, that will take place on the first day of the event. And uh, on Sunday, uh, we will be the pioneers and, uh, uh, and, and we will take place the very first swim run event in Mexico. So it'll be a very short format, like uh, a super sprint format where uh, all the athletes will be able to, to uh, swim and run in trail in a course of uh, around 13 to 14 kilometers overall. So, uh, uh, and well, one of the most important things about the event is that uh, we are doing it to, to uh, support a cause. We are going to support a Mexican NGO called uh, Brazada Abrazada. Uh, so that uh, to help them uh, continue their outstanding efforts in uh, educating young uh, kids in, in swimming and water education. Thank you very much, Rene. You forgot the most important guest that we're going to have at the event. The, the Godfather is going to be there. Steven, <laughs> you invited Steven. Steven you forgot Steven. No. You know, I, I, I said that with his blessing and his presence. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Absolutely. It'll be, it'll be a, a privilege. Uh, Antonio, I'm already training my running since we can't swim in the lockdown. Ah, that's good. How are you doing? Uh, I want to beat you. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, uh, let me tell, tell you, Stephen, that... Um, we have uh, another another friend of ours and another big organizer that has joined the 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 the, the meeting. Um, Ivan Torres. He organizes an event in Bacalar and other ones in uh, in Quintana Roo. And um, 
you know, if you see him um, later on, let's give him the, uh, a little bit of the microphone if he wants to yes, say something yes. about his event. And um, it's, uh, it's uh, Rafa, are you in? I don't, I don't see him. Is he? Okay. Nora, would you like to say something before Rafa comes in, while we wait for Rafa? Yes, yeah, but just uh, uh, let me tell a start. Uh, uh, I think in Mexico we have uh, beautiful places and scenarios to swim. We have lakes, rivers, and beautiful, beautiful ocean. And uh, we have events in all around the country. And all the, I think all the uh, fans, the lovers of the open water swimming, have uh, grew up uh, a lot. Uh, excuse me, I am nervous. <laughs> it's my first e e examination in English. <laughs> No. Well. Uh, no, but uh, the open water swimming in Mexico have uh, grew up like around the world and also the events in Mexico. We have a lot, uh, about uh, 40 events in all the country. Uh, well, today we have uh, invited uh, Edna, René, Belin, Rafa and also Isivan here. Uh, they organize the, my, most of the main events in Mexico, but we have uh, plenty of events, a lot of alternative to swim, and uh, I have swam most of them. Uh, this year, I, I am invited, I was invited to swim in Nado Seguro with Berlin. Uh, I will be next year with, the, with, with them. Uh, because of the COVID, they have to change, to move the date to next year. Also, I think also for Boca Laguna, Rene, is going to is going to be until next year yeah the the original date was on the 9th and 10th of may so obviously because of of the same reasons we will have to uh to change the date and we were actually thinking about uh uh going to 2021 early 2021 and uh this could also give a plus to a new event because uh there are not so many cold water swimming uh, events in Mexico. So uh, in late February, uh, the water is a little bit coldish, say uh, 17, 18 degrees here. So it'll be a, a good chance for swimmers either to, to, uh, to change to a cold swim format in Mexico or to get to buy a, a wetsuit. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I couldn't speak. Uh, well, regarding this change on the, on the date, well, Chapala is known as one of the best climates in the world. So the, cold, the water could be a bit cold, but the outside temperature, it's always around 30 degrees Celsius. So we have the perfect conditions all year round to have these uh, big events and, and try to bring as many people as possible to, to visit uh, and with, with all the privilege that Chapala offers to the guests, plus all the security that surrounds Boca Laguna. Great. Yeah, I could be very, I am very proud to say that uh, all the events, uh, all the organizers here are very professional and they take care of the security a lot. Um, all the scenarios are beautiful. I have swam in La Paz with Edna and for ellas. Is uh, for me is one of the best swims around the world. <laughs> now the, the, the water, the, the ocean is very cold, and also they have an important cause is uh, the donation for uh, to help people with cancer. And Edna, uh, this year is going to be the the eleventh edition. The yeah, it's going to be Saturday ten. 3, 5, and 10K, and on Sunday 11 will be uh, relays, 35K relays, and solo swimmers. Yes. I'm not sure we, we're having solo swimmers this time. <laughs> the 11th, the 11th year, for Porellas, oh, the 12th. Sorry. Rene, Rene, Rene just, you know, raise his hand that he's going to do the, the solo. In por ellas. <laughs> <laughs> Rafa. Ya llegó Rafa. Nora says it's not impossible. <laughs> ¿Cómo están? Rafa has just joined us. Um, 
it's great that you joined us. How was uh, how was your meeting with the with the authorities? Uh, it was a bit crazy. Hi to everyone, Jorge, well, Tonio, of, of course, Steven, Nora, everyone is just like amazing. Um, it's great to see you guys here. Steven, it's an honor to see you once again. Thank you for uh, this invitation. Yeah. Um, well, um, everything just went well. The things here is just that, uh, maybe you already talked about it, but it's, uh, everything just like moving. Yes, everything just has... It's gonna have so many changes in open water. I'm more in this kind of events because I already talked to the to the authorities here, and um, we might have to change. We have to have a second scenery in the swimming for El Cruce. Let's say if we cannot have like a thousand swimmers to go all the way to Isla Mujeres, then we're gonna have to have another event here in Cancun. This uh, is gonna. It's going to be something interesting for the next years, you know. Uh, but for this year, um, the 10K, for the first thing, is going to be Cancun to Isla Mujeres. If not, we're going to have to swim some, uh, like a 10K around here, Cancun, some places around here. Uh, you know, the mouth discovers. We're going to have to use them. The Man, it's too much information that I have to share with you guys. <laughs> but... Uh, it's going to be really interesting to start with these events. And uh, hopefully, as we are the, the first one who's going to start on September, so all the ice is going to be exactly with the El Cruce. Um, all the authorities are really interesting. The tourism is, all, is also taking care of all the information that we can share to these people so we can just spread it out to the, to the world because they want to bring some, so many swimmers to El Cruce. But... I don't know, Tonio. It's going to be quite an adventure for this year. It's going to be quite an it adventure. It is already an adventure. <laughs> it is already. Uh, it Rafa, is. Rafa, what, take us yeah. a little bit, a little bit slower. Um, so the, this year's cruise will be in September. Yes. Okay. And so far, exactly. you don't know if it's going to go Cancun is La Mujeres or where you will have to have a different course. Well, actually, right now, we have to keep El Cruce as it is, Cancun to Isla Mujeres. But there's one thing here. As you know, we have about 700 swimmers. But it's not only the swimmers, are the companions also, which we go all the way to 2,000 assistant. So if we only have uh, these big ships which carry 450 people, and they won't allow it, because they're going to allow on, only maybe 150 people, 250 people. Then we're going to have only one event for the swimmers, and we won't have any of the companions over there in Isla Mujeres. That's the first thing. So if they allow us to do that, that's the, that's the main scenery that we're going to have. If they weren't allowed to have 400, 500, 600 swimmers in Isla Mujeres, then we're going to have to have the event here in Cancun. But that's something that we're going to have to know until June, around uh, the 15th of June. So, ha would you have a limit of swimmers coming this year? Or do, would you going to go um, all the way to a thousand? You're going to, because Belin was telling us that uh, in her event, she closed it at 800. Are you thinking about closing the event in a, in a, in a smaller number than you have done in, in, the, in the last years? Well, actually, right now we have already 750 swimmers. But I don't think they are going to come, of course. So we're going to have around maybe 30% uh, is going to won't be here. So maybe we're going to have about five, 600 swimmers. But we still have the registrations open. So um, we might have around, in total, around 700 swimmers in total, yes. I don't think it's going to be that far. Uh, maybe not, maybe yeah, around 700 to 750, that's it. Or the two distances. Uh, I have a question to to everybody. Is are the authorities, Mexican authorities, um, viewing the open water swimming events any differently from a running marathon or a triathlon or a charity walk or a, even a, a, a soccer game? Um, are there any differences between open water and all the other sports held in Mexico? at this time? 
No, in my place, not. It's the same for everybody. Okay. Right now, the beaches are closed. You okay. cannot go and walk, or you even cannot go go and swim. So it's they are really closed, and they they are guards here where I live. Okay. That's in my place. Yes. Uh, same yeah, here. Yes, it is. But I'm telling all the authorities that it's much, much, much safer to swim in the ocean. You don't have any contact. You don't talk to the persons and, and ocean water really heals everything and disinfect everything, right? Yes. <laughs> so yes. we're trying to like to push a little bit so we're able to go into the ocean. Yes. Stephen. Yes. Um, Ivan, who is the organizer from Bacalar, um, Unfortunately, he does not speak. He doesn't speak English. He sent me a, a message, and this is something that uh, you and I have uh, talked when we were thinking about uh, um, our um, our event in California. And um, he is a big uh, um, uh, uh, propo proponent that uh, buoys should be used uh, during the open water swims. That uh, buoys should be to open water swimming as um, Helmets are for triathlon during the biking. Um, you know, I, I would like to pose the question to the organizer how they feel about, uh, uh, you know, the buoys and the importance of the safety using the buoys. And I know one of you want to con comment something on that. Um, right now, are there any races in Mexico that have the uh, flotation buoys for each swimmer? Quintana Roo, yes. Yeah, it's, for us it's mandatory actually right now. We uh, and we, that's something that we have to have here. That's something mandatory in each of the events here in Quintana Roo, and uh, it's something that we have to, of course, uh, to 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 really review for each event because, as Tonio says, it's something that we have to use as a as you said, Tonio, as a helmet. That's one of the main important things that we have. We, we even have some whistles. <laughs> it was funny because a few years ago until now, we offer this, uh, to, they have to have the bow but also the whistles. Why? Because if one swimmer was really tired, he just, you know, put his hands up and just use the whistle and, and we knew that he was looking for some help. But I guess that the tow bowies are, the main things that we have to start uh, promoting in each event of swimming of open water events. Got it. I not... differ uh, uh, in a way. For example, our event that it's a circuit, many people ask if they can wear the boy. And we say, okay, if you want it, you can do it. But because it's a circuit for us, sometimes it can be like, for another um, for another swimmers a little bit difficult and it can be it can bother other people to swim this is a very particular uh, way of thinking I, I don't know this is in my opinion because I mean we do the event in a circuit and we have cover all around the circuit and we have uh, see, uh, jet skis and we have boats and we have kayaks and paddle boards and we have believe me all the circuit is completely secure and for us sometimes the boy it can be bothered for other swimmers but this is for a circuit but I, I know for a cross it can be well a mandatory of course yes but it's, it can be like a difference between where you, you can uh, wear a boy or not to wear a boy. I don't know. Perhaps other organizers uh, uh, have another opinion. I don't know. I um, agree with Belin uh, because uh, I have swimming in Cancun with this. I didn't wear that buoy and uh, it was really tough to go through all these swimmers with buoys and also the string and uh, of course you go with your stroke and you push the buoy and then you have all these strings on your hands so I, you gotta go away from there and so for me it's a little bit uh, tough 
to swim between swimmers with buoys. And as well, I prefer much more, like people come to your event, Berlin, and says uh, if they can wear a buoy. And I go like, yes, of course you can wear a buoy. For me, that's um, an advertise that this swimmer is not really prepared in three or five K or whatever he's gonna swim. So you take a look much more in these people that it's using a buoy than the ones that are already prepared to do so. And for me, the education for open water swimming, it's to train. Train hard, as hard as to do so what you, whatever you're gonna swim. So for me, it's like much more to educate people than to have a lot of people that it's not sure to be able to cross three, uh, 1,500 or 3K or 5K uh, because these, um, it makes me feel a little bit much more insecure having a lot of people that it's not prepared to do so. so. That's my opinion, and, and of course, security, you, you, you do the best to have all the security you can in your event with jet skis, with uh, paddle boarders and kayakers and pangas, of course, right? So it's like you are watching everybody, and of course, if somebody raised their hand, they, they have assistance straight away, and it could be anything, but also, well, as I was educated, by many good swimmers, open water swimmers, and here are some. Uh, it's for me, it's like, um, you gotta be prepared, not mentally and physical and with all your heart to do so. So that's my opinion and it should be optional. Absolutely, uh, I, think, uh, I think it depends a lot also in, in the race format. Uh, as for El Cruce, I think uh, it's probably good if uh, people decide to use the buoys, especially because uh, for some, most of the time, they will be swimming alone by, by themselves. Uh, uh, most of the times that I've swam El Cruce, uh, for the first uh, 10 to 15 minutes, uh, you're swimming with all the rest of the swimmers, but after that, you don't really see anybody. So. Uh, in those types of, uh, of events, uh, I think it's necessary to make it uh, probably uh, not compulsory, but, uh, but optional. Uh, as for the rest of the events or other types of events, uh, saying uh, in our case, since it's a, a, a man-made lake, it's a very safe and secure place. Uh, it's also a circuit. So uh, if you're swimming and you're positioned and going into a rough spot or something like that, you get nervous or whatever, uh, you can always swim to the shore and it'll be not more than 50 meters away. So uh, we, I, I think that we will make it optional for the 7.5K, but we will organize uh, how they start uh, uh, to be in spacious with, with uh, good space so that this doesn't happen. Uh, the thing that uh, Edna was telling about, uh, about you, you can probably get even tangled with someone else's buoy. So uh, in secure circuit uh, events, I would say that uh, it's not really necessary, especially if you, are, you, you have the, the required uh, lifeguarding uh, infrastructure and all the rest of it. Thank you. You want to make a question, Stephen? No, I I I, I know uh, firsthand. I, I've been in Cabo San Lucas and Cancun and Acapulco. Uh, the Mexican events are unbelievably good, first class. Um, uh, they're safe, and you can tell by all of the race directors' uh, focus on uh, safety. But also, uh, they're very fun. Um, the finish line is fun and there's music playing and of course the, the food afterwards is is delicious um, uh, you know I, I highly encourage um, people to go um, before the race what I really liked about uh, participating in the Mexican swims is everybody's so friendly um, 
uh, you know, they're, they're asking you, where are you from? What do you do? What is your age group? Uh, have you done this <laughs> one before? So they're friendly and competitive. They, they want to know, you know, are you going to be faster than me or slower than me? Um, uh, when the information is explained in Spanish, of course, the uh, swimmer can be standing right next to you. And if he or she knows you cannot uh, understand Spanish, they then go out and explain to you again. Uh, everything about the, the uh, races in, in Mexico uh, for the swimmers around the world who travel to Europe and Asia and Africa to swim, uh, I want to encourage them very strongly to make a stop in Mexico. Uh, the water is so beautiful and, and whether you're in uh, uh, Cancun or Cabo San Lucas or it, even the very interesting swims that you have in the middle of the country, in the lakes, in the rivers, every single one of them has a very rich and, and beautiful history. So it, it's, you know, the swimmers, of course, they know about swims in France and Spain and Italy. They know about the races in Hong Kong and Japan. But Mexico is really a great place to visit, um, a great place to compete, and most of all, a great place to make uh, new friends. That, that's my impression of, of Mexican swimming. Thank you, Steven. One last Toño. question. Sí. Toño. Eh, digo, si me permites, digo, una disculpa a todos por no expresarme en inglés, pero sí no quiero dejar pasar esta oportunidad. He escuchado los comentarios este, del uso de la boya. Me gustaría expresar eh, mi opinión. Eh, nosotros organizamos en, en Quintana Roo cinco eventos, el de Playa del Carmen, eh, uno en Isla Mujeres, eh, Bacalar, y hacemos triatlones. Eh, y bueno... En este tema de la boya, eh, ahorita he escuchado que lo del circuito, que, bueno, las opiniones de los demás, solo quiero contarles de nuestra experiencia. Donde conocí a Steve eh, fue en el Mundial del 2010, donde ganó Frank Crippen, eh, que un mes después compitió en Dubai, siendo el campeón en Cancún, aquí en el circuito de los 10K de, del circuito mundial de, de aguas abiertas. Un mes después compitió en Dubai y falleció ahogado de un paro cardíaco y lo encontraron mucho tiempo después. Eh, a nosotros, los accidentes que hemos tenido los, o, lo, o las cosas que han pasado han sido paros cardíacos de competidores muy bien entrenados en Bacalar, que es un, es un evento pues, con mucha seguridad. Todos los eventos que hacemos en Quintana Roo, y aquí está Rafa, que no me dejará mentir, son de excesiva seguridad. Este, y los, los eventos que hemos tenido han sido mortales. Hemos tenido dos personas que han muerto por paros al corazón, por paros cardíacos fulminantes y no los hemos encontrado en el momento porque se han hundido. En Bacalar está a 17 metros de profundidad y nos tardamos medio día en encontrar el, el, el cuerpo del nadador. Eh, les recuerdo que ahora en febrero en Argentina, eh, no sé si ya encontraron el cuerpo, pero hasta donde yo me quedé llevaban más de un mes y sin encontrar un cuerpo. Yo siento que la boya hasta nos ayudaría en la sana distancia, que, que en el mar no existe porque pues eh, la sal mata eh, todo y el cloro también. Pero yo siento que sí tenemos que tomar en cuenta como organizadores, ojalá y nunca les pase, ojalá y nunca, nunca, nunca tengan nada que ver con, con eso. Yo he pasado por eso dos veces. Este, gracias a Dios, eh, pues gracias a toda la seguridad que implementamos en nuestros eventos, pues hemos salido adelante y avante. Pero el ver a las familias, como dice Steve, aquí los eventos son de felicidad, son de alegría, y pues que te suceda una de estas cosas no es para nada bonito. Eh, yo, el uso de la boya, sí, la, la, en nuestros eventos es obligatoria para todos y nos ha dado mucha tranquilidad y mucha paz. De hecho, la primera vez que la hicimos obligatoria fue eh, desactivada, la podían usar desactivada, pero el, 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 el nadador que, que, que le dio el paro cardíaco ni tuvo tiempo de activarla, pero... Eh, lo encontramos, gracias a Dios estaba un guardavidas muy cerca y lo encontró a dos metros eh, bajo el agua y rápido lo sacamos y llegó vivo al hospital si les comparto todo esto es para que pues también escuchen la otra parte de los que hemos vivido esto y yo sé que todos ustedes tienen mucha seguridad pero no está de más y el inconveniente de que sea un poco y 
incómodo para el nadador, pues es equitativo para todos, es igual para todos, este, y bueno, pues eso es eh, mi comentario, piénsenlo, la verdad es como, lo comparo como el casco, a lo mejor el casco al principio, no todos los ciclistas se querían poner casco, era incómodo, a lo mejor les, les calentaba la cabeza o su cuerpo incrementaba la temperatura, pero ahora no me imagino un evento de ciclismo ni de triatlón sin uso de casco. Y mi deseo es que no exista, bueno, ojalá, ojalá, ese es mi deseo, eh, que no exista un evento de aguas abiertas sin el uso de la boya obligatoria, porque nos ayuda a dos cosas. Uno, eh, pues a la seguridad propia del nadador y dos, a la visibilidad también de que algunas lanchas o embarcación puedan ver al nadador, pues para no empropenarlo, no golpearlo o para simplemente ubicarlo cuando se sale del curso. Eh, hay veces que el clima también influye mucho. Eh, eh, hemos tenido veces donde el agua, digo, el clima está perfecto y en segundos cae tanta agua que, y cae tan, tan fuerte la lluvia que la vista es imposible a un metro. Eh, nos ha pasado muchas veces. Y bueno, pues esta es mi opinión, mi sugerencia. Y ojalá y, y bueno, eh, lleguemos a esto. Muchas gracias, Toño. Muchas gracias, Iván. Um, Steven, and for our, for our, for our, our public, um, what Iván was saying is the importance of the buoys, especially when somebody has an accident. And remember, this is something we talk about, for example, what happened in New York, that you can find the body of the swimmer. And he's saying that he, had, that he has had in his events two incidences with people who had the heart attacks. And he was giving the example of, uh, um, you know, this very good swimmer that uh, he, you know, he was, he won one of the open, uh, the 10 case in, in uh, FINA um, championships, and then he had a heart attack. And this is something that uh, we face in, in open water swimming as we face in triathlon or we face in, in, um, in, uh, in, uh, in marathon is that people, even when they're healthy, they can have a, a heart attack. And the buoy is something that can help identify if somebody is in trouble or if somebody has a problem that um, they don't disappear and sink. Um, I will, I will post a final question to the organizers because we have 10 minutes to go. It is, um, you as an organizer face many problems, um, you know, starting with how you're going to fund the event and how you're going to go with the authorities and, and, uh, and uh, get the volunteers, but there has to be something that you really enjoy. And um, in, in my case, when I, when I used to organize events, it was also always, what are we going to do with the caps? What are we, what, which logo do we want to have? How do we want to present the event? And that's something that I really enjoyed. And that's why, you know, I still do it with my swimming caps. And I'm always giving people swimming caps. Um, I would like to ask you, each one of you, which is the thing that you enjoy the most about your event? Just one thing. Why don't we start with uh, up north, Etna? I love to make the picture, the whole picture, how the t-shirt is going to look, what is going to go on the swimming cap. Uh, I really enjoy do, doing all this. As I see the whole picture, I start doing the whole picture every year. Everybody says like, oh, you know the, the steps, you know, or you already know, uh, have the know-how. And let me tell you that every year is different. You don't have A, B, C. Every year you can go to, from the C to the B to the D, whatever. So um, it's really exciting. And what I do is that I really enjoy coloring how it's gonna uh, become this event or every year. And the main thing is the cost. So what are we gonna do? And we are already talking to the hospital and, and we know uh, already what are we gonna do with those donations so that's um that's the part that i enjoy the most <laughs> okay. making the roots <laughs> uh, for me um i think i really enjoy i'm i'm a swimmer since i was very little i start doing open water i remember in the lake of chapala because i'm from guadalajara when i was like 13 years old or 14 years old and what I really uh, like or love to, to do the event is, is uh, um, seeing all the people that can start doing something and have like a challenger. So, because for me, 
uh, to do an open water swimming. It's like an experience. It's um, a very enjoyable thing that I can do in my life, more than to race or have the first uh, place or whatever. What I really enjoy is to swim and to be in the, in the, in the water and to have the experience. And I think that's why the open waters right now is growing so much because the people want to have experiences and doing something different, not only swimming in the pool, like going out and having fun. So I'm, I, I really enjoy, enjoy to have fun for the open water. It's, I enjoy that. And I like to the people that and can enjoy and uh, participate and start doing something different. So I enjoy doing that. Hey, Rafa. Well, um, I guess to see everyone just arrive, <laughs> the first thing to see when I'm happy is to see everyone just arrive to the, to the finish line. Because uh, as you know, the crew said when they started, just like a massive people, it's just like huge, you know. And um, when they started, it's just like my heart just like, you know, coming out of my chest. It's, it's amazing. But as soon as I see everyone just arrive, the last one, four hours and 30 minutes, it doesn't matter. But when I see these people just arrive with their faces and just like, oh man, this, this was quite an experience. I will do it again. It doesn't matter if, if it's uh, like this, like this, like, like this, but they really love the, the crossing. That's the best satisfaction, you know, because you know what? what? What I've noticed about this is that when the father does this, they encourage the son. So they bring the next year for, for a 1.5 or 3.8, then they jump to the 10K. So that's so beautiful because you can see how this is a generation sport also that is growing. So that's something that I love. As soon as I see everyone just arrive there, they have this phase. They, see, uh, they start talking about the waves, the, the, how the current. They see, they see Noah, Patty Coleman, they see all these people that start like, hey, how, how was it for you? How was this for you? How was this for you? Did you see uh, anything? Noah, did you see the Musa, which is the underwater museum? No, I didn't see it, but I see it. So that's what I like. That's what I love about this. As soon as everything just uh, finished, the, the greatest way it has to be. Ivan, ¿quieres comentar algo rápido? ¿Qué es lo que más te gusta de tu evento? Bueno, lo que más me gusta de nuestros eventos o los eventos de aguas abiertas en general es que son eventos donde toda la familia puede participar, donde ves al nieto, al papá, al abuelo, a la abuela, a la tía, todos compitiendo en un mismo evento. Es un evento donde al mismo tiempo puede estar toda la familia compitiendo, cada uno en su categoría y al final llegar y verlos que se abrazan, que, que, que llegaron a una meta juntos. Eso para mí es lo máximo. Y más, si a lo mejor hasta en el podium están varias, varios participantes de la familia, eso es lo que a mí me llena, eso es lo que, lo que me hace feliz de, de nosotros crecimos en la alberca, ir a competir en la alberca, pues era todo el día en la alberca y el hotel, y en aguas abiertas es la fiesta, la competencia, la premiación, y aparte, pues conocer el lugar, ¿no? Nos da tiempo para vacacionar o y disfrutar nuestro hermoso país. Gracias, Iván. Iván was telling Stephen that he, the, the, the thing that he enjoys the, he enjoys the most of the events is that the whole family can take uh, part of the event. And that's what he, he likes the most. So we'll give the, the word to, to, to Nora and we'll finish with René. Nora, besides being first place, what's what you like the most about the events? Uh, first, uh, <laughs> I am not a, an organizer, but if I were, I, I was just here, if I were, I would love to see the smile and the happiness of each swimmer when he's crossing the finish line. I think that would be a very uh, important uh, motive, uh, motivo para mí, <laughs> to organize an event. No, but uh, I want to congratulate all the organizers in Mexico because they have a great events and I invite them to continue with the prof all the professional work they, they are doing. And I also would like to invite the, the swimmers around the world to come to Mexico and swim. We have a great places to swim and great uh, oceans. And we wait for them. We are, uh, like Stephen was telling, 
telling us uh, we have very warm people. We like to, to receive uh, swimmers around the world and to share this passion with them. Thank you. And now, the last, the last one will be um, Carlos and René, and René has a special guest for our audience. <laughs> like you mentioned, Antonio, at the beginning, the athletes are expecting the best event when they arrive to the event. So watching them, uh, watching happy faces after the end, uh, at the end of the event means that we succeed and we did uh, the best event we could ever do. So that was, that's, that's our goal. Yeah, also, well, since, since it's a, a, very new, a brand new event for us, uh, one of the things that we enjoy the best is the visualization part, right? So uh, trying to visualize uh, from a swimmer's point of view, what do you expect from, a, from an event, such as a, a very smooth re registration, uh, very good uh, infrastructure and all the rest of it. And uh, we are actually at the venue so as for visualization, we want to show you where the event is going to take place. Just a little teaser for all of you guys. <laughs> Here we are. Oh. I am jealous. <laughs> I, wanted, I wanted to bring uh, Jacinta, my new daughter, to the scene, but uh, I can't really find her. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, this is what we really enjoy, and of course the opportunity to to give our extra mile in this case by supporting uh, Brasada, Brasada, the NGO. Uh, I think that we we live nowadays in a in a moment where we all need to to think about an extra mile that we can uh, give uh, by taking, uh, for instance, the, in this case, swimming as our central engine to use it uh, to support a, a certain cause. So that's one of the main things that, uh, that we really, really enjoy. Well, thank you very much to all of you. Steven, closing comments. No, it, everybody has been uh, very, it's been very educational and very motivational. And uh, I look forward to going down to Mexico. <laughs> I have very, a question for you, Steven. <laughs> You have to come and swim the, the seven ocean, the Mexican ocean seven. Yes, <laughs> yes, and we'll definitely do ocean seven Mexico style. Awesome, that's awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. See you soon. Gracias. Gracias. It's a pleasure to see Thank you. you. Bye. Thank all of you. Adios a todos. Adios. Gracias. Adios. Saludos. Gracias. Uh, Gracias. One thing, everybody stay online, and I want to take a picture of everybody. Okay. So everybody smile. <laughs> Pongan sus videos, porque muchos están sus nombres. Si pueden activar sus videos, por favor. A ver, Thank wait, you. wait, wait, Steven. Oh, okay. uh, they okay. are activating the video. There we go. One, two, three. <laughs> Thank you. Steve. Yes. Nice to see you. Nice, nice to, to see, see you. Yes. Nice to see you. Bye. Bye-bye. Adios. Bye.